This is River from Community Coin, and this is the way that I see it. Today, we're going to be talking about Gen Z drawn to simpler living. That's a very interesting title because I think we're all going to be drawn to simpler living here in the coming months and years. But let's explore this idea. The baby boomers and millennials enjoyed a fairly economically successful period of time. We were able to have good jobs and careers and have a nice house and car and savings and live the American dream, the middle class and upper middle class lifestyle. Gen Z, Gen X are going to have a different experience. The Gen Xers are having more difficulty finding a career, finding good jobs, meaningful employment, buying houses and cars and whatnot. And Gen Z is going to have it even worse. So is this a bad thing or a good thing? That's really the question, I think. And it could be either. I think that with the baby boomers and the millennials, we had all of our lower needs met when we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The lower needs are things like safety and security and food and shelter and things of that sort. And because we were in economic good times, we did have all of those needs met. And so we were able to focus on higher needs like um, happiness and contentment and fulfillment. And that was a good thing in, in, a, in a way, and it was a bad thing in a way. It was good in that it's always good to know yourself and to strive for happiness and contentment and fulfillment. And it's nice to have all of your basic needs met. But when we are living in that kind of a lifestyle, we tend to neglect our connection to life. We, we live in our heads and we live in our ideas and our fantasies and our desires and we neglect living in the now, living in the, the fundamental foundational life, the, the life of survival and sustaining. And so being disconnected from that, many people in those older generations were struggling with things like existential angst and depression and boredom. And then they would get themselves into trouble trying to alleviate the boredom and existential angst. And so, you know, the, the nice, comfortable life of the baby boomers and millennials had its own trials. But we're going to talk specifically about Gen X and Gen Z and the trials that they will face and are facing and whether that is a good thing or a bad thing. Gen X and Gen Z will not have and do not have the comfortable economic situation that the older generations enjoyed. But I propose that that offers them an opportunity to make something of that situation. They say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So what kind of lemonade can Gen X and Gen Z make from this? Well, when they are struggling more so than previous generations to meet their fundamental basic needs, then they are more connected with the root or ground level survival and need meeting instincts. They are struggling on a more fundamental level rather than the previous generations who were struggling on a more existential higher level. And this struggle on a more fundamental level has its rewards and benefits. When you are struggling on these lower levels rather than on the upper levels, 
you are more connected to what it means to be alive. You're more connected to survival and to what it means to be human and to be in this world and be in this moment. And that can be a good thing. I know that most people that are struggling at whatever level, but especially struggling at these lower levels, tend to feel more like it's not a, a, a benefit or, or a good thing and feel more like it's a terrible thing. And they start having these pity parties and feeling sorry for themselves. And, and that is one way to do it. But as my mother always said, life is only 10% what happens to you and 90% what you make of it. And so I challenge Gen X and Gen Z and even the baby boomers and millennials that are going to be having hard times in the coming months and years to make lemonade out of this situation, to see this as an opportunity to become creative and resourceful and an opportunity to make new opportunities for yourself and an opportunity to make growth opportunities and an opportunity to expand and grow. And that brings me to a nice segue because with communitycoin.com, that's what we're all about is building community, building network, building support relationships and mutual assistance relationships. And that's gonna be so important in this new economy that we are entering, we all are going to desperately need support networks, support relationships, mutual assistance relationships. And that has always existed. People have always helped their neighbors and helped their friends and helped their family. And that's great and that should always continue but with communitycoin.com, we have an opportunity to, to expand that um, network beyond just family and friends and neighbors. We can expand our network and expand our mutual assistance community. And we can create an extensive network of mutual assistance. And with a bigger network, then there is more opportunity to have your needs fulfilled. And so I think in summary that this new economy that we're moving into, this moving out of the economy of excess and the economy of consumption and moving into an economy of subsistence, I think that this can be a good thing. We just have to have the right attitude about it. We have to see it as a challenge to overcome and not a burden to bear. And so that is the way that I see it. And next time we will be talking about the supply.